Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We're thrilled to have you. So I'd like to start first of all with a land acknowledgement. Mentor Canada respectfully acknowledges that the lands upon which we operate are the traditional territories of the respective First Nations, Métis Nations and Inuit who are longtime stewards of the lands. And we know that uh, the Canadian Parks and Recreation Association is located on the unceded traditional territory, territory of the Algonquin and the Mohawk First Nations. We acknowledge the historical oppression of lands, cultures, and the original peoples of what we now know as Canada. And we aim to contribute to the healing and decolonizing journey that we all share together today. Um, it's important for us to just take a moment um, to recognize the lands to which we're operating on and uh, the lands to which we uh, live, work, and play. So thank you. I'm Tracy Luca Huger. I'm the Senior Director of Strategic Partnerships and Initiatives with Mentor Canada. We have been working behind the scenes with the Canadian Parks and Recreation Association to build out uh, the mentoring component for your youth employment strategy. And so we're really thrilled. I'm loving that um, we can offer you this training today and some orientation. Joining me today as well from Mentor Canada is Michelle Montero. Uh, she's our training specialist. And for those of you that have colleagues from some of your French organizations across the country, she'll be offering this training in French next week as well. So we have some poll questions we're going to integrate throughout today. So we want to know how many years have you been working with parks and in, within the parks and recreation field? We want to get a good sense of who's in the room and the vast uh, experience that we have around the table today. Wow, we've got some um, incredible experience and subject matter experts at 49%. We've got some newer people that have been um, newer to the field and on their career journey two to five years. And then we've got like a chunk of people that are brand new to the field, so less than a year. So welcome um, to the field. And this is a really great opportunity that uh, you can join us today and that um, you can embark on this journey around youth employment and looking at it through a mentoring lens. So I'm going to share a little bit about Mentor Canada. We are not a direct service provider. We are a coalition of organizations and stakeholders that provide youth mentoring. We are working together to raise the profile of mentoring for young people across our country. And so what does that really mean? We are working with organizations such as yours to increase quality mentoring opportunities, to increase the capacity to embed and to engage young people in mentoring. Um, and then we want more individuals across our country to become mentors. And whether that's formal mentors or informal mentors, we know that young people are seeking out those connections and that they really, really benefit for not only their future career pathways, but for their own well-being in having mentors in their lives. So we are working collectively to not only increase the quality, but to also increase opportunities for young people in our country. The Canadian Parks and Recreation Association, as you know, is a national organization dedicated to realizing the full potential of parks and recreation as a major contributor to community health and vibrancy. And so I love that you actually are reaching 90% of Canadian communities. And we know that the impact of recreation is nothing but positive in not only creating healthy lifestyles for young people, but also healthy communities and bridging and bonding. And so we know that the pandemic has had huge impact for you um, and that you've been able to pivot. And certainly the work that you're moving forward is important. Um, and we're thrilled to be able to partner with you on this today. The strategic goals of CPRA is, um, well, first of all, to be a voice. You're a national voice and CPRA is a national voice of parks and recreation, advancing collective interests of your members. And so for you as members, that's really critical in order for you to have a voice at the table, but also to move those strategic goals forward, to build community, the well-being of people in communities, communities as a whole, and to look at building out really healthy environments across our nation. And then CPRA is, is a service provider, which I think is fabulous. You provide services for your members, for you at the table, partners that cultivate dialogue and learning and innovation. And so we're really thrilled to be able to collaborate, to work towards engaging more youth, and youth employees uh, through a mentoring lens. CPRA has collective strength. And as you shared, and as we talked about earlier, that you're reaching 90% of communities. You have a network in 13 different provinces and territories and those through those associations. 
the board members, part-time staff, volunteers, government partners, allied sectors that contribute to moving your strategic goals forward. And, you know, um, I've worked in the youth serving field for a very, very long time, and recreation is always such a core element for youth well-being. And so I'm thrilled to see that the good work at a national level, that it continues to happen. Um, and we know that we have um, Aaron Love joining us today from Ottawa, from your national office, uh, who oversees this project and many, many others. So we're really thrilled to be a part of that today. So what are we going to learn about over the next uh, 90 minutes or so? We're going to take a tour and, and teach you, and, and we're going to have some discussion about what mentoring is, what the impact of mentoring is, what the role is for you as a mentor, not only as someone who works within your organization as a supervisor, but what does that mean to mentor young people? Uh, what does it mean to develop a mentoring relationship? Um, and how does mentoring support competency building in youth employees and to build out their networks of support? So if you could be mentored by anyone, who would that be? Um, you can say out loud, I know we're doing this virtually across the country today. So I really like to have an interactive session that um, people can just jump in and share. People can also use chat. Um, so let's get started. If you can be mentored by anyone, who would you want that to be? We have Barack Obama, Benny Brown, Nelson Mandela, my boss, Tom Brady. Love it. So as you can see, when people identify mentors, it comes from a very wide variety of people. Some people um, identify somebody that they know and that's an acquaintance that they'd like to be mentored by. Others, it's somebody that's far out of reach. Um, but usually it's someone that they aspire to be or somebody that they could learn from, somebody that they respect um, in their activities and who they are, what their values are. I think that that's just so important um, for us to think about and to consider when we're looking at um, your role as a mentor and what that really means for you as you move forward. What are definitions of mentoring? What is mentoring? We define mentoring as the presence of a caring individual who provides support, advice, friendship, reinforcement, and constructive role modeling over time. And over time um, really does change, right? That could be over a month. It could be over six months, it could be a year, it could be over a long extended time. Um, the Oxford Dictionary uh, defines a mentor as someone as an experienced and trusted advisor. And within your handbook and within CPRA, uh, you're defining mentoring that is the pairing of an experienced or skilled person, you as mentors, with a person who would like to improve their skills as a mentee. The mentor acts as a role model and supports the mentee by sharing hmm, knowledge, resources, and advice to help them improve their skills. Not only improve skills, but have a really good understanding of what their role is, and then what are career opportunities for those young people, certainly as they're embarking potentially on a career in parks and recreation, or embarking on a career in general and getting some life experience and some work experience. So I have a video right now I'm going to share. Um, it's of a young um, Inu man um, that has been involved with some of our Power of Mentoring events and some of our experiences. And he really just starts to highlight and articulate what, um, what mentoring means to him and what are some of those opportunities and benefits. Um, so I'm going to play that right now. You know, met amazing mentors who taught me, you know, the little things in life matter and, uh, you know, influence is at all levels. And so that was one of the first things that I learned. Influence is at all levels. So you don't have to be a CEO or a manager to have influence on someone. You can have influence on the close people around you, like your family, your friends. And as soon as I realized that, I, I started to carry myself differently. I wanted to uh, have a good influence on the people around me and be able to inspire people just through little things, you know, sleeping earlier or making your bed in the morning, you know, if you do that and people see you that you do that, then you'll see a, a great change around you. So that was something that uh, definitely in the last year has been um, really, really cool for me to uh, experience and learn. What I love about this video and Ipoli's voice is that um, he is early on in his career and has been able to connect with mentors in the work setting, 
but also mentors in the community. And that he's been able to start to identify that he has influence, that he has a voice. And as we explore today, one of the great things and the most powerful things about mentoring is that it's about teaching and learning, both for the mentor and the mentee. And um, especially for young leaders that are coming into the workplace, understanding that they have something to contribute and, and actually can teach us that have been seasoned veterans in the workplace um, about what that means on their journey and what they have to contribute, not only to their role, but also yeah, to no the organization. Way. So what is the history of mentoring? Mentoring has been around for a very, very long time. It actually appears in the Odyssey as um, the Greek poet Homer was entrusted mentor actually to take care of his son. And he had to take off and go off seas and go fight in the war. And I think that that's just so important that the, the word mentor and the name mentor has been around for a very, very long time. So this is not a new concept that we're talking about. But what we have started to learn is that the influence of mentoring and the role of mentoring uh, for young people and in our communities really has evolved. And that we're seeing that individuals that walk alongside us and walk alongside uh, young and, and young employees as well as youth has a huge impact, not only on their job satisfaction, but also on their ability to move forward, right? Their ability to identify that they have influence, that they can make a difference and that they have something to contribute. So what does the research tell us? So at Mentor Canada, we have been embarking on the last year of conducting research across our country. What is most fascinating is that we didn't have this research study and any knowledge really around mentoring and the impact of it and the reach and the gaps in Canada. We have lots of North American research on mentoring. And so we wanted to embark as Mentor Canada on really understanding what does it mean in Canada to have a mentor, where are the gaps and where is the influence? So here's what we've learned over the course of the last year in conducting these studies, that mentored young people were 53% more likely to report having good mental health than non-mentored youth. This is really important for us to understand, especially as we're coming out of the pandemic. We know that mental health um, is um, something we need to pay really close attention to, not only for ourselves, but for the young people that are going to be um, employed by your organization, but also young people in our communities. Um, that mentor young people are twice as likely to have completed high school, 95% to pursue higher education. And I think back to what I probably had to say and that really is about that his influence, but also that he has something to contribute and that his future is brighter. Um, that young people that had a formal mentor were 78 more likely to have an occupation as well moving forward. And so that is a really interesting piece. So not only for your youth employees coming forward um, that they're employed now, but future employment. Um, and that Again, self-confidence, right? That 75% around self-confidence. And I think we heard that in I Police Voice. Uh, as well, young people who had a mentor were over two times more likely that they felt that they belonged in their community. And this is what I really love about the work that you're doing, because this is also about building communities and that those young people coming to the table and coming to your organizations, right? Then also having that mentoring and building out those connections and uh, social capital increase their sense of belonging, not only to your organization, but to the community where they live, work, and play. So what else have we learned? We've also learned that young people in Canada have not only learned new academic and school skills, so academic skills, that they've learned new life skills, and that they've learned new career and job-related skills. And this is what I love about this um, work that you're embarking on is that you intentionally are wanting to teach job-related skills through mentoring and that you are looking to engage more young people into careers um, within parks and recreation. And so when we talk about mentoring, this also means formal, informal, and natural mentors. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. When we look at it from a, a CPRA standpoint as well, we know that young people that have a mentor, right? Improve their skills, their self-confidence, also job satisfaction. And we've heard that from young people across our country as well, that they want hands-on mentoring when they're employed, that they want those opportunities to learn, 
and that it will contribute to job satisfaction. But it also, for you as mentors, contributes to your understanding of your own leadership skills. It allows you to reflect back not only as what you've learned in your career, but you as an individual and what you have to contribute um, and offer a, a young employee and someone that's just embarking on their career. What else have we learned? This one slide, I think, really does apply nicely to the work that you're doing, that it's helped to shape young people in their job and career aspirations, getting a first job, finding or applying for funding or a trade school or university and having a mentor staying in or going back to school and then applying for trade school, college or university. So they play a really huge role for young people as they're looking at careers, but also as they're transitioning in their life. And we know as young employees and that youth as employees, that those are big pivotal moments for them. Um, and whether or not, I, it's not about putting pressure on you, but you're playing a role and, and you're having an influence in the conversations you're having and that continuity of exploring career options with them um, is really exciting in, in your strategy and in this program for young people. So what else have we learned? That young people had unmet needs as well, that 44% of young people did not have a mentor while growing up. So this was reflecting back before the age of 18. And so what I love about your strategy is so for some of those young people that may not have had a mentor while they were growing up, um, you are actually filling that gap now through your program strategy and playing that role of a mentor and giving them that mentoring experience that 54% of young adults report unmet needs about accessing. They didn't know how to find a mentor. So within your organization now and taking on a mentoring mindset, you're actually providing them with that opportunity um, and helping to meet some of those needs as they move forward around career development, career opportunities, looking at their future, identifying skill sets that they may have. And then also, right, some young people have identified greater odds of reporting unmet needs. So we know that young people facing risks have a greater barrier access to finding a mentor, right? With young people that have functional disability, at least one or more, LGBTQ2S+, we also know young people um, living in poverty, right? That their social networks are limited and that you're starting to expand that through mentoring opportunities um, within your program structure and within your role. What else did we learn? Young people didn't know how to find a mentor, that they didn't understand what mentoring was or the value of having a mentor. And through some of your program models and the structures that you've built into this program approach, you actually are supporting young people to understand the role that a mentor can play for them and the value that that can have for them, not only while they are um, experiencing employment with you, but moving forward. And that there was no programs available. So young people didn't, weren't aware that there was a mentoring program in their community or at their fingertips. And so for you to embed this into an employment opportunity really is bridging that connection and filling huge gaps for young people across our country, which I love. So the types of mentoring relationships, and I know I've referenced it a little bit earlier in a slide. So formal through an actual mentoring program. So for example, through a boys and girls club or through a big brother, big sister program, an informal program an informal mentor, sorry, uh, someone like a teacher or a coach or a leader. And so where it hasn't been technically set up as a mentoring relationship, right? So somebody that a young person identifies that had a really positive influence on them that they identify and self-identify as a mentor, a natural mentor, somebody in their neighborhood or an aunt or an uncle, somebody within their network um, that occurs naturally within their network. So through CPRA, like you've actually built in a formal mentoring program and a formal mentoring strategy, which I think is really phenomenal for young people. Um, because many times, as we just spoke about, they don't have access, they don't know how to find one. And as you saw in the statistics and the experience of young people in our country, so many young people have those barriers. And so no, not only are young people coming to you and actually um, having employment opportunities, but they're also going to have a mentoring experience, which I think is just so incredible. Uh, MJ, I think we've got a poll for everybody. So what we want to know is from your own personal experience, either now or in the past, um, select all that apply if you've had the experience of having a formal mentor or an informal mentor or a, ma or a natural mentor. MJ, how are we doing? 
Yeah, I think we have everyone that is voting. So I'm ending the poll. Okay, perfect. Yeah, phenomenal. And you know what? This is just so interesting because this, your responses reflect so much of what young people are experiencing as well. That the majority of young people in our country, including yourselves, have experienced an informal mentor or a natural mentor. Um, very few people um, and young people in our country and in Canada have experienced the opportunity to have a formal mentor and a formal mentoring relationship. And so your work and the work of CPRA um, is really cutting edge to fill a huge gap, a formal mentoring gap for mentoring programs within our country. And um, not only is your reach amongst your the several communities that you're operating in across our country, it really is bridging for us at Mentor Canada, a huge gap within our sector. And so congratulations, I just love it. I think it's, um, it, it not only is going to fill a mentoring gap, but it's going to influence um, the generation moving forward. And so most of us, when we think back on our lives, I am the same, right? I, when I look back on my relationships and who's been mentors in my life, it's been a leader that I've engaged with at work um, or somebody that I've met through a professional setting um, and then a teacher, right? Looking back on my life, um, right? It was those teachers that played a role and they may not have known that they were playing a mentoring role, but it was in their actions, um, in their encouragement, um, identifying skills that I had um, and capabilities that I had that I didn't see in myself that really led me to go, you know what, they were a mentor to me and they really helped to shape me and who I am today. So we have another video I wanna share with you. This is the voice of another young leader who really shares around the influence that mentoring has had in her life and the role that a mentor played in her helping to really come to terms and figure out who she is and, and what does it mean as a, young, as a young person, right? Up to the age of 30, what does that mean um, to transition into adulthood? mentor, Camille, who has taught me how to make difficult decisions. You know, I um, come to her and be like, oh, I have this decision to make. I know it's the right decision, but I'm afraid to disappoint the person. And she would say, make the right decision to therapy. <laughs> you know? um, and she, was, she really highlighted life for me. One day she just sat me down and she heard me complain about how hard it was to be an adult. <laughs> And she let me talk, 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 talk. And once I was finally done, she said, um, okay, I hear all of that, but guess what? It doesn't get easier, um, but you get better at it. And that was the first time that I felt like someone had showed me the book of life, the, the, what it's really like. Um, and it's so confident. And yeah, I would just say I've had really great mentors. What I, what I love about this is that Anaya shared that it was the first time that she, uh, somebody shared with her the book of life and that it was okay to make a decision and to make a decision because you're going to learn, you're going to experience life and that it's okay and that things will be okay. What I also really like about that um, story and her uh, recapping that experience is that there was a trust there that this person wasn't going to walk away if she made a decision and the result didn't end up, so, end up so well. And that they were gonna walk alongside and that they were gonna be on this journey with her. And so I want you to think about that as you embark on this journey as not only a leader or manager within your organization, but what that means for a young employee to walk alongside them in their journey. They're going to come to you with many different backgrounds, many different experiences, and um, building that trust, um, it, I think is a really critical point and a really critical element and area um, to start with. Because if you have trust in that relationship and that young person knows that you were there for them, um, you will watch them flourish and take risks um, in the job and try out new skills and try out new opportunities um, in moving forward, even if the, their employment is a short-term experience with you, um, they're really going to explore and move forward. And so with the youth employment experience at CPRA, you have program goals. 
right, to provide a job placement for young people, particularly those facing barriers, right? So we know opportunity youth, those young people that have potentially face systemic racism, young people that are living in impoverished communities, young people that might be newcomers to Canada. Um, so we know that those young people have lots of barriers and that your experience, not only through job placement and employment, but the mentoring component is going to help to give them the confidence to move forward and actually start to consider their life skills and their life experiences as a skill set that they bring to the table. You're going to enable uh, youth to connect with a mentor, um, which is you, which I think is phenomenal, build skills, expand networks, increase knowledge of parks and recreation as a sector and an employment pathway, engage a diverse group of young Canadians in the program that may not have actually thought of parks and recreation as a career option for them beyond maybe this summer experience, which I think is really phenomenal. Increase recruitment and retention of youth facing barriers to employment in Canada, not only employment in Canada, but also within your sector and widening that scope. Um, and we like to think about and have conversation with young people um, around the concept of they don't know what they don't know, right? We don't know what we don't know. And until you start to share with them the vast opportunities within the rec parks and recreation sector, they may come in with a certain mindset and certain lens on it and not really see all of the different career opportunities. Also, to provide much needed support to communities to hire you to advance park parks and recreation priorities. So again, I love the community mindedness and that that is part of young people being connected, but also your community members being connected. Um, MJ, I think we have another poll question for everybody. So what we want to know is, in your opinion, which of these goals is most important? So you want to rank your most important, second important, and then start to work down as far as priorities. We know that these are the overall goals, but really curious to see in your, with, through your lens and the role that you're doing, what is the mo most important and then start to um, build that out through a hierarchy of importance in those goals. There is no right answer on this. I just wanna let you all know, this is really just your perception. So Aaron's not marking down like, oh my goodness, they think this is a poor goal. I, I just really wanna get a, a context of how you're coming into your role and what you see from your community um, where, which are the priority goals for you and in your context of where you're offering your services and engaging you, you know, what you want, what you feel is most important to be paying attention to, um, as you're employing young people and, and looking at it through a mentoring lens. Okay. Let's take a look at this. This is really interesting. Um, cause I did not have a, any sense of where things would land. So Top priority in the goals is what we're looking at is building skills and competencies, expand networks, increase knowledge of parks and recreation sector. That's great. I think that that's great. But close behind that, right? Like anything within that 20% is provide job placement for young people facing barriers and then increase the recruitment and retention of youth facing barriers. So very much about embracing young people into the parks and recreation field and it providing them with job placement and opportunities, certainly within your realm, love it. Um, so second, very similar, but what we've added into here, right, job placement, but we've also then seen in this is second, um, is to provide much needed support to communities to hire additional youth to advance parks and recreation priorities. Um, and then I, I like that because it's that community minded. And what we're finding when we're trying to engage more and more young people into mentoring is that community engagement piece, but also being driven by community. So as you engage more and more young people that um, are facing barriers and maybe from communities that are harder to reach, there will be a reputation and those communities will start to recognize that parks and recreation and employment and those career pathways are opportunities for them. Um, we do quite a bit of work within the Black community and helping Black communities to establish mentoring programs. And what we hear from those Black-led organizations and those Black leaders is that those communities do not see, and those young people in those communities do not necessarily identify with new career pathways um, for themselves. And so this is a really important point, and I love that, that you see that that's a priority for you, is to engage not only those communities, but to start to build that reputation 
around opportunities for employment for those young people. Um, and then third, enable young people um, to connect with a mentor. And I think that that's absolutely great. So let's get them in the door, right? Provide them with that job placement, with employment opportunities, um, to understand parks and recreation as a sector, and then do that through a mentoring lens and connect them with a mentor. So I think that that is just a beautiful way um, to round out your program and your priorities. Um, and I'm sure, Erin, you're really pleased to, to see some of these results today because that is, um, that's just a, a fabulous way to look at the work and the important work that you're doing. Again, the mentoring component and that community engagement piece is standing out again, um, which I think is just phenomenal. Um, and here we are. So I think that that's great. Thank you so much for um, sharing your opinions on that. Anyone wanna jump in and add any feedback? I haven't given you an opportunity to share your thoughts thus far, something that has struck you and stood out either through the videos um, or through some of the polling um, that we've done. Please feel free just to jump in. I can't see you because I'm in full uh, presentation mode. So um, if you've raised a hand, um, just jump in or add it in the chat and maybe MJ, you can um, narrate that for me. I just had a comment mm -hmm. uh, re regarding the, it's, uh, I've been around for a while. I'm, I'm on the bubble of retirement here, hopefully in the next year or two, but uh, I tell you, the rewards that have come back over the years, having mentored in lots of different situations, uh, is, uh, you know, the selfish side of it is it's, uh, I, I'm amazed of what, how rewarding it's become of, uh, it comes back to you in many, many different ways and avenues that you'd never really think of for, uh, you know, mentoring kids will and not so much kids sometimes either, right? So mm -hmm. but I think this program's awesome. Yeah, I do too. And and do you know what? There There is nothing selfish about that. And your opinion and your experience is absolutely the experience of individuals that have stepped into a mentoring role. So many times we hear and ongoing we hear, I hope that that young person I'm mentoring is getting as much out of it as I am. And yeah. that is the one piece that, you know, I shared earlier, it's about that teaching and learning and connecting. And that it's about two people walking a pathway together and that there is teaching and learning on both sides. Um, and especially, you know, during the pandemic, where that physical and social isolation has occurred, and we know that young people are struggling in making those connections and even feeling a bit anxious about going back out and how do I bridge them and make them, that sharing of experience and life journey and, and really human connection is just so important. So I love, I love that you shared that around the rewards because we really do hear that um, from mentors and from young people that if it's done well, and then if you bridge that connection with each other, um, the rewards of the give and take um, are experienced on both sides. So thank you for sharing that. That's how it, you're welcome. Anyone else? Okay, I'm going to move forward because we have lots to cover today. So thank you for sharing that. We already talked about which goals stand out for you and why. And, you know, it's, it's important. And I think we started to share around that employment experience is just so important to remove those barriers. Young people want employment opportunities and they want experiences that will not only um, add um, credentialing and experiences to their resume, but they want that hands-on experience that will allow them to feel connected to their community and to identify skills that they already innately have. So mentoring relationships are relationships that are powerful, they broaden perspectives, increase opportunities and strengthen communities for everyone. And so I think that that got highlighted through our comments, but also in the work that you're doing and your community focused work as well, is that it, this is not just about young people benefiting, this is about everybody experiencing a connection um, and, and growing together and building community. So what to expect though, and I think that this is a really important place that we need to just spend a little bit of time, is that young people 
are working through barriers. Many young interns face several barriers that impact their work performance, their relationships with managers and colleagues. They may have limited transportation options. They might um, be working in a, or living in a remote community where that has become a struggle for them. Um, we also know that we need to support those young people um, that have limited social supports limited social capital. And what we mean by that is those connections to people um, that can support that role model of what does it mean to be a professional? What does it mean to be a leader and, and contributor within your parks and recreation organization? And so what does that really look like? That young people come to you at different stages of development and not only age development, because we know that young people that have experience systemic racism. We know that young people that have faced barriers um, to access to resources, to human connections, to um, quality education, that those are really, really um, impact their development, right? In stages of development to have those life experiences. They come to us with different life experiences. We know that um, some young people um, coming through your door are newcomers or they, um, their parents are newcomers and that they haven't had the opportunities to bridge those community connections yet, but they come with experiences. And this is a really important piece that I think for you as mentors to really think about is that they come with life experience. A young person that has immigrated from another country, if they've immigrated through a refugee program or refugee camp and they have survived those experiences, it would be incredible to, for them to identify and for you to help them to identify those life experiences actually contribute to skill. So some of it is about being resourceful. Some of it is about um, overcoming challenges on the job, right? Learning to adapt to a new environment. Um, and some of those things you can't learn in textbook, right? Those are life skills. And young people might think that those are deficits in their life, but highlighting what they bring to the table through that experience, right? Gets them to start to think about, okay, I have something to contribute. And that my own unique life experience um, brings a different advantage to me in the role and what I have to offer versus just an academic or a work experience element. Systemic racism, it's real, it exists. I think we need to acknowledge it. And it's a piece um, that we need to pay close attention to, but also just understand that it exists, that young people, BIPOC young people, and coming from various backgrounds are experiencing racism, whether it's overt, right, or not. Um, and that's, that's important to acknowledge and to pay attention to. Um, and that COVID and mental health um, are playing a big, huge role, not only for young people, but for all of us. And what COVID I think has done at some level is that we've all been on this unique and new journey and experience and crisis together. And that everyone has struggled at some point in time. And being real with that, that young people might feel overwhelmed um, around coming into the job, that they might be struggling with some mental health, um, as well as each of us, right? Having up and down moments, feeling a bit more anxious, getting out into the public um, and engaging with people socially. So have that conversation. We have resources um, as well in your communities that you can link young people to as far as community resources. Important element for all of us to pay close attention to. Um, and then what does it look like around um, cultural competence and strengthening that within your organization? And I know CPRA is paying close attention around cultural competence and looking at resources as well. Um, how they communicate with young people, um, what has value to them, and understanding youth culture and what's on their plate right now. We know that they want access to opportunities, um, but might feel a little bit isolated in how they do that. So I wanted just to highlight those things because young people, especially today um, and coming out of COVID are going to be different than maybe the young people that you engaged in employment two years ago. Um, their school experience has been different, certainly in Ontario and across our country. Lots have been out of school for a period of time. Um, it really has demonstrated the economic imbalance of young people across our country and communities. So um, pay attention and, and sometimes just being authentic, like, yeah, I'm struggling, right? Like being authentic and saying, you know, this has been a challenge for me or, you know what, I'm anxious in starting up, you know, 
um, getting involved in social activities again. And so what do we need to do to ensure that everyone is thriving and sometimes just acknowledging um, the state that everyone is in and that this is new and that it's been um, an incredibly um, pivotal time in our history um, is an important one. Any questions or comments on this slide? Okay, we're gonna move forward. So what are qualities of mentors in your life? But like you just added in chat or um, just take yourself off mute and add, what are some of the qualities that you identified? So the majority of people identified that they had an informal mentor or a natural mentor. Some of you identified that you had a formal mentor. So what are some of those qualities? And just jump in if you want. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Sense of call. Um, explain that a little bit to me. Share what you mean by sense of calm. Well, just, uh, you know, just being, just calm. And I guess most importantly, you know, your listening skills, like anything of what they're, what the feedback is from them and trying to, like anything in a relationship, read where they really are and what their their needs are to be, uh, you know, successful with them on how, how to teach them. Yeah, I, I really Everybody like takes in information a little differently, right? So. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's one of the great things about mentoring is that it really is about, okay, go try that. Let's talk about it. Let me link you to a resource and let's take a, a look at it on paper. Right. Let's have an experiential learning opportunity while you're in it. And then what did you learn? Right. How did you make that decision? How did that go for you? And then if it didn't go so well, right, debrief it, like talk about what was the learning opportunity and then how they've grown through that. Um, so I think that those are important. It's about being present, I think, as well. Right. We know in our jobs that we're um, some days are, are more uh, busy than others and that you get pulled, but um, when you're spending that time with your mentee, it's it's just about sitting in the moment, right? Really hearing what their experience is. And then if you're not sure, don't assume, ask. Ask the question, right? What do you mean by that? Help me to understand um, what that's like, right? And you, you, know, you said that you're coming into the job feeling awkward or, or not sure. Um, let's talk about that, right? And, and how we can support you to feel more confident and um, unpack it a little bit. Any other qualities that people want to share? MJ, is there stuff in the chat that I can't see? Yeah, so we have inspiring patients, has the ability to give feedback, someone that's honest, someone that's calm, educated, a lot of patience, someone that leads by example, someone that's supportive, someone that's available, someone that's authentic and challenges their mentees, someone that's curious or cares about you, someone that is flexible, that is able to vary their mentoring methods depending on the needs of the youth, and someone that can challenge someone depending on how they want the person to develop mentally. Um, I think that's all we have. That's awesome. I love it. I love those words. And next time we do this, we're going to do it in a wordle because I love to see that like on the screen because it is so powerful. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, because the lead by example, I think, is an important one. Not only will young people and young leaders watch, right? How do you navigate that? How do you, how do you facilitate a meeting? And how do you respond to difficult questions being asked and be able to navigate that? But the other piece that I think is just so important is that you're not perfect, that we've all made huge mistakes. We've all made errors in our work and in our roles. And um, sharing those, sharing that you're not perfect, because that's a lot of pressure on you to come across as you know it all, you know everything, and that you haven't made mistakes. But being that authentic piece around, yeah, and guess what? Here's the mistake I made. You know, when when I was a young employer, when I first started out, and for some of you that are new to parks and recreation, under a year, that you're not far, you know, ahead as far as being comfortable in your position either. And sometimes that shorter distance and, and journey is an important one to say, look, I've only been here for a year, less than a year. And here was my experience, like day one, right? Here's where I made a mistake or in the first six months or the first three months, this is sort of how I felt. And, and this is what I did to circumvent that barrier or to overcome that challenge. 
or to be able to laugh at yourself. And I think that humor piece is just so important, um, especially if young people right, are uneasy and they want to do their best or they're just not sure and feeling confident. Here's some things we know about mentors, and you've highlighted lots of them already. Interpersonal warmth, engaging, self-aware, active listener, trustworthy and dependable, unconditional positive regard, respectful of values. And I think that that one, I'd like to pause here because young people are going to have very different values than you. And depending on um, your age and the generation that you've grown up in and um, the environment and context of your own family and your world, right? Values are going to be different, but there's lots of learning that can be done around difference in values and discovery around value systems, but being respectful of them, right? Good natured humor, I highlighted that. Laugh at yourself, laugh at the mistake, laugh at those pieces and use it as a learning opportunity, not only for yourself that you learn from, but also for that young person. High expectations, but not perfection, right? So set the expectation high that, but encourage it, right? Like you can do this. Yeah, I know it's the first time, I don't know, you've chaired a meeting, first time you've led a group, um, but I know you can do this. So let's work on what you're, what you're right. What's going to be your backup plan. What's your bag of trip tricks. And that I can help you with that. And that talk about those experiences when you've had and been in those positions before and, and what it looked like, right. Where you made a mistake and where people will notice I walk alongside, right. Cause this is about the journey. It's not um, always about the end result because the horizon keeps shifting for all of us. It's about the journey and walking alongside them. Think about your role as a mentor, right? Good listener, highlighted that. Fun person, right? And that doesn't mean that you need to be life of the party, but that that young leader experiences, right? That, you're, that you get them, that they can have some fun with you as well, that it's not always about business and administration. A guide, right? Helps to set and achieve goals. And we know within your handbooks and within the guides, there's, there's a goal setting section. Right? So how are you going to help and support them in identifying, setting, and then working towards those goals by the end of the program? Motivator, right? Encouragement. They're going to make mistakes, right? If they're not making mistakes and they're not pushing themselves, they're not learning and they're not growing. And that stands for all of us, right? A coach, though, that will help you build skills and confidence, right? And, and keep you going to the end result. Role model, like we said, right? Lead by example. Be the role model that's admired and looked up to. What is your role not? And I think that this is a really, really important one. Um, sometimes more important than what your role is, right? You're not a parent figure, someone who acts like a parent um, or um, another authority figure in those young people's lives. That's important to distinguish that. You're not a therapist or counselor that you're trying to analyze everything. We know that young people may come um, that are maybe surfacing with some mental health concerns or that mental health is is um, an area that they might need some support in, right? You're not that role as that clinical therapist or that mental health professional, but how do you build that in, in linking them to resources and opportunities? Cure all, right? It's not about providing a solution for every problem or challenge on the job. It's about, okay, try it. And then let's see how that turns out, right? And then we're gonna talk about it, what you learn. Missionary, right? This isn't about your own personal religious beliefs or values. And we talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, advisor, right? Not an advisor who offers advice at every step. So encourage them, right, to make some of those decisions on their own, set them up so then they have to make some of those decisions, right? You're not going to safeguard everything in the box um, because you want them to push their skill level and to look at their potential as well. As you embark on your role as a mentor with youth employees, what traits and qualities would you think for yourself that will be important to uphold and convey? And then I also want you to really think about what are those that might become a roadblock for you as well? So in the chat or um, take yourself off mute, I'd love to hear some of those. MJ, I'm going to need you to uh, narrate for me. Someone said sense of humor, um, taking things in their stride, modeling how to make mistakes or manage mistakes rather. Someone that's compassionate and patient. Someone that is reliable. Leadership skills, role modeling, and has empathy. Genuinely interested, be accountable, being honest and open, consistency. I really love the reliable and the consistency, right? So it's that predictability. And part of that reliability and consistency builds trust. That 
if you set a meeting and that you show up, that your response to them making a mistake <clears throat> or asking a question or feeling uneasy about something that it's consistent, that they know that this relationship is a safe one for them really to explore who they are and um, their potential and skills, right? Learning new skills, right? We know, right? When, when all of us learn to ride a bike and I'm assuming that most of us know how to ride a bike, right? That was hard at the beginning, right? It like fell lots, lots of skin knees, hopefully not too many skin faces. Um, but that took time, right? And it was about that patience and practicing, right? Building off of what you learned, um, you know, when you first got on and then getting back on and using what you did and doing more of something and then less of something. For young people that are employees, right? If this is their first time being employed, um, with an organization like yourselves, right? Huge opportunity, but they're going to make mistakes because it's foreign to them. They haven't, they haven't embraced that opportunity before and they haven't embarked on that journey before. So I love that. Um, and being genuine. Like, I think that young people are pretty intuitive. They're going to know if you're genuine or if you're just going through the motions. Um, and so I think that that's really great as well. So mentoring in your role, right? Young people, especially those disconnected, our neat youth from those that are disconnected from employment, education and training, they need to have access to relationships that support them. And so those are really important things. So a young person that you're mentoring in your role may not want to embark on that role that you're currently in or in the same career, but it's about building that connection to others that maybe work in parks and recreation that are in a field or in that career that maybe they want to. So just because you're the mentor doesn't mean that it needs to parallel or align completely, but it's about then expanding that network for those young people beyond yourself and identifying those skills that they have. So I really love this slide and, we, and I like to use it frequently because we've all seen Death Valley, right? And what it looks like, it's dry, it's desert, it's cracked, it doesn't look like anything is living, but it is, right? There is seeds of possibility waiting under the right conditions, right? That life is inevitable. And this is the opportunity that mentoring and your program brings is that by nurturing it, looking at the possibility under those right conditions of offering mentorship and employment for those young people, right? They can build on their skill, they can flourish um, and they can really come to life to see what potential there they have for themselves. And so I think we heard that in the two videos, both from, Ipoli and Anaya, that it was those words and that sharing in that experience, facing fears um, and coming to new understanding that both of them feel like, okay, I have something to contribute. I can handle adulthood. I can handle a career opportunity and life and that I have influence even as a young person. And so think about that um, and what that young person brings, what they're showing you on the surface, and then what is underneath that. And that's the curiosity piece that I think is so wonderful about engaging in those conversations and through a mentoring role. Did we know 50% and over 50% of new hires result from a personal connection? So think back in your career, I guarantee that at least once in your career, you had the opportunity to get employment or, or be hired through somebody who knew somebody even that opened a door for you or somebody that pulled your resume because they saw you or met you somewhere else or heard about you. It's those connections that have huge influence, not only for ourselves, but for young people. And when we look at that, we call that social capital. So that it's that connection between young people and building out those support networks for individuals. So when we look at that, this is the web of support piece that we like to think about and that we like to talk about. So you might be that first degree connection because that young person has been placed with you as a mentor in their role, but you will know somebody maybe that you can connect to them, whether that's a career opportunity or a skill set or a subject matter expert that maybe you don't have that you can then bridge for that young person and then beyond. And so for bridging those connections beyond yourself, takes the weight off you to feel like I need to know everything. I don't have that skill set. I'm not an expert in this. That's not the career I'm in, but I know somebody. Then that young person has a web of supports 
they're building out their social capital. So not only do they have you, but they have somebody that you've linked them to in a connection or you've linked them to in an email to start a conversation. So it's those degrees that really demonstrate why that's so important from a mentoring lens for young people and, and who they are and building out that social capital. So the why, this links to goal number five around recreation capacity, right? Ensure the continued growth and sustainability in the recreation field, expanding professional networks, not only for yourself, not only within the parks and recreation field, but for those young people providing them with an inside perspective, right? Around a career and around your organization and around the community that you operate in. We know that parks and recreation organizations at the local level have vast connections and partnerships and collaborations to all sorts of organizations, right? So how do you link them? Um, how do you prepare those young people for careers, right? Not only, so, even if that young person decides by the end of the season, you know what, it's not parks and recreation, but what have you given them to prepare them for other career pathways? Knowledge about new ones, right? What are those opportunities um, that they never dreamed of and never thought about? Build their confidence, not only in skill development, but also through what they're already bringing to the table and those skills and natural elements and um, even the personality that they have um, that you can see that they may not have confidence to identify in themselves. And then understand what the skills are that that individual young person needs to develop um, and helping them to move forward with it. Um, MJ, I think we have another poll question. So which do you believe that youth employees need the greatest support? And we just want you to identify. There isn't a right or wrong answer. Um, but just curious around your, what you're identifying and what you're seeing, even from some of your previous work with uh, youth employees, where are they needing the greatest support? Something that's important to highlight is um, I know some statistics that have come out of um, CPRA is that only 8.4% of young people, right, between the ages of 15 and 24, right, were employed in the arts, culture, and recreation sector in Canada. That's not high at all, like less than 10%. So there's a huge opportunity with this program to not only engage more young people and future generations for future jobs and future work um, around the vast career pathways that exist within the parks and recreation field. Um, I think that that's just tremendous. Um, and that really young leaders are, are a pathway forward, right? They are bringing a new perspective and new skill sets to understand um, what communities need because they will be our leaders of tomorrow. How are we doing, MJ? Perfect, thank you. Okay, let's see. So 42% um, um, help building confidence. I love that because if you can build confidence in a mentee and in a young person, right? You're going to get to that skill development. All of those tangible concrete areas are going to surface. That's just magically going to happen, right? But if they don't have the confidence to take the step forward, to walk through the door, to share a skill that you identify and to challenge themselves, knowing that, you know, you're going to catch their fall. Um, it's just so critical. Like that, that's the gateway. So, in building confidence in order to get there, it's about building that trusted relationship, being centered, exactly those things that you've identified, who they are, being present, or present, sorry, being able to um, have those conversations, laugh at yourself, share your own struggles, um, I think is just so important. All the rest of these will come through building that confidence and building that connection. So I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. Any surprises here for people? And I just want to open it as well. Any surprises, A, and then B, let's talk about that confidence building a little bit um, and why you think that that's so important. So um, again, take yourself off mute if you would like to share or in the chat as well. MJ, how are we doing? Anything in the, in the chat? We don't have anything in the chat. So if people want to sort of um, take themselves off mute or if they will, are still needing a few moments to type. Um, so 
Um, I think it's a key piece for building confidence um, is helping young name, um, youth name their strength. Um, someone said, I feel like all of these are important. Um, confidence in communication skills or learning to be confident in different scenarios. Yeah, so many times it's about being in a new environment, right? And not being confident. I've never been in this situation before. And knowing that you're going to be there to help coach them and that it's okay to make the mistakes along the way. I think that that is um, just such an important opportunity for young people and setting that stage for them to build that. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time. I've got some resources as well to help to look at confidence, help to look at skills and what young people are bringing to the table. So the synergy between mentors and young leaders, um, it equals and results in right, social connection, networks of support and career opportunities. So starting, it's about curiosity. Who is that young person in front of you? And the same thing for young people, right? What does that mean to be curious, not only about the job, but about um, who that young person is as a mentor and what the mentoring experience could be? Not what it has to be, but what the potential it has, building that connection. And then clarity, right? Through that curiosity and that connection, and through our polling that we talked about, right? Young people are gonna reach some clarity. And we know that also you're gonna reach some clarity as well about who young people are today. And in even shifts around parks and recreation, right? What are those shifts that help to expand and continue to evolve to meet the needs of young people moving forward and to connect to community? States of mentoring relationships, developing rapport and trust. And this is through some of the onboarding. So we know that that onboarding piece is an important one. Demonstrating commitment and reaching goals, that's when the mentoring can start, right? After you build that rapport and that trust, then you can start to reach goals and work on those um, tangible, um, more deep conversations. And then at closure, right? There's really those three stages and then closure, celebrating the experience, moving on, recapping from it. Um, that are just so very, very important for young people to understand and to experience. Lots of young people have had relationships in, both formally and informally, that haven't been good experiences for them. And so how do you ensure that the closure of this formal program is a positive experience for them? And then if there was a connection, that's the beauty of mentoring, is that keep that door open so that that young person can follow up, reach out to you, continue a conversation, even if it's just through text message or phone or meeting for a coffee. But again, keeping in mind that you will become part of that network for that young person. And even just doing a check-in with them every once in a while to say, hey, how are you doing? How's it going, right? How's school this year? You know, I know you said you were, you know, super excited about it or a little bit anxious because it was going back on site. Um, so those are really interesting things to think about in your role, but keeping that state of the mentoring relationship at the forefront. Don't expect out of the gate that young people are going to be open and ready to go. Now, you might have some young people that are ready and they're going to blow you away and go, okay, maybe I'm not ready yet to engage in those conversations. So how do you use um, your mentoring agreement that is in your handbook and in the manual and in the guide to support that? Right? How do you use that as a conversation starter? And how do you um, start to really get to know who that young person is in front of you? So I know I spoke about the curious conversations and building connection, and I referenced Death Valley. So when we look at the iceberg and the waterline of visibility, right? These are things that you'll be able to see on the surface about who that young person is when they walk in the door. But there is a whole host of skills, life experiences, depth of that young person that um, need to be nurtured so that they could share with you. So how through curious conversations um, can you build that connection that there's opportunity for them to share that learning styles, personality, life experiences, their own orientation, thinking style, their family status or circumstance, that context, the perspectives. And so I like this as well because it's, it's really important. What we see on the surface, there's so much more. And so how do, how do you as a mentor think about being curious about more than just what you see sitting in your office or in front of you or on your screen? So 
How do you build and manage the relationship? Work together. Balance teaching and learning. And so how do you balance that teaching and learning, you know, versus coming in top down? How do you give that opportunity for a young person to say, okay, what can you teach me about that? What do you know about that from your own experience, right? What's your perspective? And then it's that teaching and learning piece together. Be solution oriented, right? So if there's a problem or barrier or they're struggling, right? What's the solution? Not just for you to tell them the solution, what your thoughts are, but what do they identify as solutions as well? Be transparent about what you want and, and um, what you and your mentee need, right? So same thing. Um, expect that your mentee and encourage them to be transparent about what they need from you, right? Are you giving them what they need? And, and as a supervisor, right, um, that's always a really great way to engage as well is about, am I giving you what you need? right? What could I do different to help you to be successful, you know, over your employment here? Celebrate and troubleshoot, right? Celebrate the wow moments and the successes and then troubleshoot barriers and the mistakes and then connect and add value, right? And this goes for both, right? So this is an important piece, not only for you as a mentor to go in with that lens, but also for the young people, right? That they need to work together because they are 50% of that equation, that they also have something to teach and to learn, that they also need to offer solutions, not just come to you for all of the answers and expect you to put in that hard work, that they need to be transparent about what they need and want, that they also want to celebrate and troubleshoot, right? Contribute to that. And that they need to want to connect and add value to that relationship. Again, it's that piece about formally and informally, adding value to the relationship and continually learning. And that's a co-learning piece. Again, this is not just about a young person doing this. It's about both mentor and mentee. And so some of the interesting things, and you've got some incredible tools in your guide um, to help you to support that. So how do you work on the development plan, right? And in the development plan on page 13, um, in your guide, there is what is the skill, what's the activity and the task, what's the timeline and deadline, and how are you going to measure that success? both for that young person to review and create, but how are you also going to contribute to that and to help to support them in it, right? How are you going to help them to look at their own competencies? And so there are lots of resources that you have at your fingertips that CPRA has developed, but also through Recreation North around the leadership assessment tool, which is a really good self-reflection and maybe you take it together look at the competency model in leading and recreation, use that as a foundation and a cornerstone for yourself. And then looking at the goal setting tools that you have also on page 12 in your guide. So how do you work on those pieces together? And how do you use this as your resource to help to shape that relationship? So it's not always just about conversation and that connection, but how do you use these tools to set the stage to allow for curious conversations and to explore what they've filled in or if they're struggling, right? If they just haven't completed it, um, what does that tell you, right? Maybe that's a confidence piece. They don't know what to put down. Maybe they don't feel that they have um, some skills that they're bringing to the table. So how can you explore that with them? So we've got a few other resources here as well that you can have access to. So you'll have access to this recording, but also to this PowerPoint um, at the end, and we'll send it to you in PDF. I know that Erin and CPRA is going to take care of that. So learning about personality. Sometimes this is a really great one to do together and individually, and then compare your answers out of the gate. So this starts to get below the surface of both of the, of, um, the iceberg, but also in Death Valley. So who are you as an individual? What does that look like? right? Are you an analyst or a diplomat or a sentinel or an explorer? It's a light, easy tool that both you and that young employee can do together. And then just start to talk about it. Where do you have overlap? Where do you have huge variance? But the variance doesn't mean that you can't connect. The variance is how does that fill a gap or a void or an area that isn't part of that personality that you can start to enhance and to share different dimension, different perspective for that young person, right? So how does that work in helping to navigate, but also how does that help you if you're having a hard time connecting, right? And being able to go back to that and you can use it in a light way to go, okay, well, I'm a diplomat. So this is how I'm always gonna look at it, right? And you're an explorer 
and, and to create that common ground with young people. Another one is Strengths Finder. So right now, Marcus Buckingham is providing this, and I think um, he's still providing this as a free online assessment to be able to use, at least at the surface level. So for young people to start to look at their strengths and what they're bringing to the table, if they're having a hard time looking at that, by them completing this Strengths Finder, you can have that conversation, right, around, okay, well, you're, you know, you're, you're totally focused and you're responsible, right? And or futuristic and that you're um, a learner and that you're a strategic thinker. And that really we need all of these to be part of our teams and our organizations. But for young people specifically, being able then to see it on paper, that a tool has helped them to identify something, um, allows you to help to push that forward, but also start to bring out those strengths and those skills for those young people to the forefront and that you need that um, and that you have something to learn from them. Especially if, you know, you're an executor and that young person, you know, is a strategic thinker, for example, and you're not, right? How does that, you know, how can they contribute to that learning and, and look at the variance and the difference in what they bring to the table? So what do you do in your first mentoring session? This is a really great way for you to look at page nine on your guide around um, what do you bring? So what is that mentorship agreement and how are you filling that in? What are they agreeing to? Um, it's a nice way to start to establish ground rules, you know, how you will engage, what your style is, how you want this mentoring relationship to look. But it also then formally outlines and you can have a walkthrough together around what you're both agreeing to do. And then add in other things. I think those other blank spots in that agreement and in that rules and responsibility is just so really, really important because it allows then that individual component and allows um, both you and the mentee to hone in on some specific areas for that relationship. So it's that brainstorming. But use those tools to discuss and to leverage and to start those conversations and then get to know each other. Um, and so we're just giving you some tools, but I do think that this is such a really great tool that you have at your fingertips. And then starting to look at your goal setting, right? For young people, we know that they've got a goal setting and a development plan as well that they need to contribute to, but how do you support them in it? And um, for those that have completed it um, and do it with ease, great. How do you enhance it, right? How do you get them to think a little bit beyond what they've already put down? And for those that have lots of blanks, how do you get them to a place where they feel confident to put something down and that you can help to create that together, right? It's not about big, huge goals, it's about setting a goal for themselves and that you're there to support them on the journey. Somebody shared that they want to be mentored by Brene Brown at the very beginning. Um, and I love this quote, connection is the energy that is created between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued, when they can give and receive without judgment. And for me, this captures mentoring in, a, in such an uh, a beautiful way. It's the essence of that energy that we create between a young person that we're mentoring in ourselves, right? That they feel seen, right? That you notice them, you notice if they're having a good day, whether they can share that or not, that they've shown up. And I think that that's just such an important one around that confidence building is that they walk through the door, they applied, they took this chance and this risk. So they showed up and that's huge that um, they feel heard, right? That you hear them, what they're saying and what they're not saying, right? And, and, and exploring that and that they feel valued for what they bring to the table, that maybe this is a challenge for them, that they're feeling anxious, but that they're valued in their role and that you see them as part of your organization, right? And that they can receive, right? Give and receive without judgment. Um, and that's just so important, right? That's the, authentic, the authenticity piece and the genuine piece in us getting to that place. So I like to end with this. Sometimes I start with it, but I like to end with it today because this is really what you're creating um, for young people through this experience. Thank you.